Three-fourths of the four corner schools have come out and denied a move to the Big 12. Is that dream over? I'll talk about that and more on today's episode of Locked on Buffs. You are Locked on Buffs, your daily podcast on the Colorado Buffaloes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? I am Kevin Borbin, and this is Locked on Buffs. I'm your host, as I am every day. Um, Let me get that fixed. There we go. Um, Today, we're talking the four corner schools to the Big 12 seems to not be happening anymore. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, the deal that the Pac-12 believes to have in place. And then I'm also going to talk about three transfers that I think that the buffs should possibly target in this next transfer portal window or even right now to add to this to add to bolster the roster but without before we go um before we start excuse me this episode is brought to you by fanduel the sport fanduel sportsbook the official sportsbook of locked on make every moment more visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started Okay, this is Locked on Buffs. Make sure to like, subscribe, whatever. Um, let's let's dive into it. The Big 12 rumors have been running rampant this entire year. Um, as soon as UCLA and USC left, conferences have began to circle the Pac-12, and it was like, oh, the Big 10 wants Stanford, or Stanford, Oregon, Washington, Cal. The Big 12 wanted Colorado, Col- um, Colorado State. Colorado, Utah, Arizona, Arizona State. And it was just like everybody was waiting for the Pac-12 excuse me, to fall apart and just has not happened. The Pac-12 has kind of, they've been deflecting, they've been bobbing and weaving. Oh, happy St. Patrick's Day, by the way. I am wearing green, so I don't need any comments saying I'm not happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, But the the Pac-12 has been bobbing and weaving and kind of holding on for dear life. And while it didn't seem all the time like they knew what they were doing, it appears that they that they think they're in the final stretch. Um, I say, I bring this up because one, it this isn't really i don't know it's i don't know how to say this without like attacking anybody i'm not trying to attack anybody but it's evident who certain people talk to in terms of like who their sources are because certain reports have been consistent in saying that the big 12 has been talking to the four corner schools every week and then the four corner schools come out and say things like we don't talk to the big 12 so it's it's kind of interesting to see who reports what because um, based on people's reporting, you could tell who their sources are. And so maybe if they have a Big 12 source, then obviously they're kind of a little more Big 12. They're giving more of a little Big 12 lean, if you know what I mean. Um, but we already had Utah's um, president, I believe it was, or athletic director, um, last, I think it was the end of last week, come out and like quote tweet a report by CBS Sports' Dennis Dodd and say, all right, like, are you serious? Like, that's not happening. Um, but then... That, of course, led to the rumors that, oh, maybe the Big 12 isn't into Utah anymore. And Utah is just salty that the Big 12 doesn't want them. Well, two other schools, three schools total. I put a three up. I know know my numbers. Um, Two other schools have come forward and say that the Pac-12 is not leaving um, the four or the four corner schools are not leaving the Pac-12. So let me let me detail who they were. First up, it was Arizona State's um, president um what's his name michael crow who met with the state press on tuesday the pac-12 media rights and he explained the pac-12 media rights negotiations are in the final stages um he continued saying we're closing to knowing where we're going to be and i think we're close to a deal i think that the pac-12 media rights became more complicated with the departure of usc and ucla duh um that's kind of the whole reason that the pac-12 took so long is people were starting to question the value of starting to say that they needed to expand and all that um, he continues saying the media rights have become more complicated also as things always do because markets go like this. They're up and down, up and down. We have a fabulous sports team. We have fabulous sports teams and one of the remaining teams we're going as well. That's interesting. I think they had a typo there. And as the remaining teams, we're going to get a good offer. We're in the final stages of the process. Um, so that was on Tuesday, um, kind of instilling confidence that, you know what, this move to the Big 12, it's not going to happen um i I don't want to say they didn't talk to the big 12 because it was evident they did um i think it was evident when colorado had their regents meeting that something was something was afoot i think it was like i talked about i think it was with josh neighbors who who's does locked on big 12 
I think Colorado and all these programs just wanted a contingency plan. Um, th these programs are not going to leave for $2 million less uh, to be in the Big 12. Um, academics is highly valued. And, I mean, the Big 12 just without – Without kind of degrading their their universities, they're not as academically prestigious as the the ones in the Pac-12 for the most part. Um, so yeah, that was one person. Um, and I'm gonna move on to the the next one. But before I do, um, it is the oh wow they they changed it up on me. I, I thought I had the ad memorized. The tournament is heating up, and now it's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no no sweat. First bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy, easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from money line to point scores and threes drained. Um, if you're doing an NBA bet, you could kind of combine things, threes. You could do like a nice little parlay. Plus, Fan, FanDuel even lets you, like I said, lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat. First bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com locked on that is fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more make every moment more with fanduel an official sports betting partner of the nba okay back to the whole pac 12 big 12 debacle um when i had josh neighbors on at that time it kind of seemed like the pac 12 was fizzling and now the pac 12 is coming out and they're looking as strong as they have um so first we had mr crow from arizona state and then i believe it was yesterday was when this report came out yep two days ago March 15th, I wrote about it yesterday. Um, the Arizona president, Robert Robbins, um, said he expects the Pac-12 to finalize a media rights deal. So they both think the deal is coming within the next couple of weeks. So we've kind of been waiting and hearing and just continuously waiting to see when the Pac-12 would do something. Um, the Big 12 kind of took shot after shot. Uh, I would say George Klevkov, um kind of, he would deflect every once a while and be like we don't know like if we're gonna go looking out there and he would say stuff every once in a while but it was never concrete like this is gonna happen soon um and the arizona president believes it's happening in a couple couple weeks and then not only did he say that but he also said that he thinks that the big that they're gonna get a better figure than the big 12 which is at 31.7 million per school and he said none of us aspire to win a bronze medal but i think we solidly got a bronze medal in this thing I think will be the the third best deal out of the Power Five leagues, which a bronze medal here in the Power Five leagues is good because I think the Big Ten is up top, SEC, and then those two are the powers, and those two are the ones that everybody thinks are going to take over college football and kind of have like two super conferences. So you're basically competing for third place regardless. Like if USC and UCLA stayed, and then maybe the Pac-12 – would have capitalized and taken some of the big 12 schools when Texas and Oklahoma left the big 12. Maybe they could have been in that discussion of being one of the, the power three. Um, but college football kind of appears to be trending to a power two eventually. Um, I'm not saying I want that. That just appears to be what it's trending to. Um, but Robbins continued because, or he continues saying until we see it in contract, we really don't know, but we've had a pretty good soft circle number. And then he said, um, a lot of the people suggest that the Pac-12 would move most or all of its games to a streaming service. He said the majority will remain on a linear platform. ESPN is believed to be a primary bidder among traditional companies. Um, so, yeah, I think, which, again, I talked about it on that episode, and I'll say it again. The Pac-12 network was not accessible. So even if they say 30% of the games are on TV and 70% are streamed, which obviously that would be like, I don't think that'd be possible for the Pac-12 like stay afloat, but just hypothetically, that'd be more people able to watch because whether people want to admit it or not, we all have subscriptions to like Apple, Amazon, whatever it may be, Hulu, Live Sports, whatever. And if you don't, you'll probably get it. I mean, it's it's 10 extra bucks a month. Um, and I'm not telling people how to spend their money, but people who want to follow their programs will find a way to follow, follow their programs. And so the Pac-12 network was literally only accessible if you purchased an extra thing of like an extra cable package. And most people didn't even know about the extra cable package. And I think only one TV provider actually came with it. And I think it was Comcast. And I don't even know if Comcast is still there. Um, but either way, 
I, I am interested at this confidence coming from the two Arizona schools and the Utah school um, because they were kind of – Arizona schools were kind of like – I want to say the main target of the Big 12, but most ge- geographical sense. Colorado already made sense because they were already part of the Big 12. But this just kind of seemed like a seamless fit, and now all, all of them are denying it. Um, Colorado is actually the only one that hasn't come out and made a made a statement against uh, a move to the Big 12, and I don't want to read too much into that. Uh, I kind of think the four, I think the four corner schools would be like a package deal, and so I don't know if one program is gonna like be the move that the Big 12, that the Big 12 would hope. Um, I think they would want to get at least four. Because then if they get, say they just got Colorado, which this is the best time to get Colorado. Colorado is at an all-time most valuable, most uh, profitable margin right now with Coach Prime at the helm. Um, But I don't think, because they'll be at 12 schools. I don't know if they want to be at 13 schools. It's a weird number, unlucky number, some might say, um, on this lucky St. Patrick's Day. Um, But before I continue, I also want to thank you guys again for making Locked On College Basketball your first listen every day or Locked on Buffs, excuse me, your first listen every day, make sure you check out our brand new podcast, Locked on College Basketball, everything you need to know about college basketball in one place, plus hear from big name experts, excuse me, insiders, coaches, and players, Locked on College Basketball, available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. Okay, so move to the Big 12, probably not going to happen. I think it's interesting that three, three presidents have come out and said, from the four corner schools too, and said, this isn't happening um which we're staying in the pac 12 we're staying put um because before this it was oregon state and washington state were like the two most vocal athletic directors or presidents i don't remember who was who speaking but here's the thing oregon state and washington state are consistently left behind in every realignment move um people more see them like if the pac 12 were to implode they probably go like their their best option would probably unless they figure out a way to like um kind of do what cal did with ucla um tie them to each other which obviously they're uc schools so they're tied together but they would have to like figure out a way to stay connected to oregon and washington and maybe try to get in that way but their projection was usually to go to the mountain west and so of course they're going to say it so to see the three of the four corner schools kind of come out and say this isn't happening like we're not going to do this Big deal Um, for Colorado. um, One, I don't want to read into it. Like I said, it's interesting. They haven't come out and said anything. Um, The Pac-12 did come to the to campus. I think it was last week or so, maybe two weeks by now. I think it was last week. They came to me with Coach Prime, and I'm sure they had some discussions about what they were not with Coach Prime. I mean, he could have been in the building. I don't know. Um, They could have had some discussions about where their target is um, in terms of value and all that and trying to keep keep everybody happy it's a tough job tough job to keep everybody happy especially when the world's saying that you're that you're not happy um but yeah i think i think a move to the big 12 is kind of fading um the reports are kind of the only reports now are it's like the big 12 is trying to is talking to them but talking it seems too late i think brett yormark for all those that I kept saying Brett Yormack for some reason, I don't know, Brett Yormack. Um, he is, I mean, he did a great job of kind of convincing the world that, hey, we're coming for them. We're coming for them. He made it seem like the, the Pac-12 was about to implode. And I think obviously, which at certain times it did seem like they're about to implode. But now I think the Pac-12 has kind of figured it out. Um, they figured out what a future looks like for them. It's going to be get a deal. Um, I don't think it's going to be the most lucrative deal. It'd be impressive if they get a deal better than the Big 12s. Then they're going to expand, probably add San Diego State, SMU. Um, I think they should add Tulane and someone else. I was thinking UNLV, but it appears to be Colorado State was the third uh, candidate. And I'm not not a big Colorado State enthusiast, as we know. This is a Locked on Bus pod. No, I'm just kidding. Um, they just don't bring a lot of value on the field. Um, academically, they're a great school. Um, market-wise, it's like Colorado's already got it. Um, they offer an in-state rival, so that's cool, but... Um, would have liked to see UNLV and Tulane or, I don't know, another Texas school um, or USF out there in South Florida if we wanted to get crazy um, because they're a great academic school. And that'd be quite the that'd be quite the conference. Um, Colorado or Colorado, the Pac-12 would then have like a four corner thing going on um, because they'd have all the West Coast schools. They'd have schools in Texas. They'd, they'd be in across four different time zones, which would be pretty crazy. Um, but obviously USF's not on the fray. I'm just saying. Um, so, yes. They're going to go media rights deal, which 
again, expected to happen in the next couple of weeks. Big deal for all the Pac-12 fans who have kind of been worried about what the future of the conference holds. Because I like you guys. I don't want college football to go into this ultra two super conference thing. I don't want to see it. I, I enjoy the rivalries. That was, that's what makes the sport special. And um, I just I'm glad to hear the Pac-12 is moving in the right direction. And then, of course, they got to go media rights deal first, which I'm assuming will be with ESPN and Amazon or Apple. One of those two streaming sources, one of those two like Apple, Amazon. Who knows? It's going to be one of them for sure because they have to stream. Um, it just is what it is. Everybody streams. Uh, the Big 12 is going to have games on ESPN+. Plus. That's how it works. Um, and then they got expand. Um, San Diego State, SMU, welcome to the Pac-12, basically. I feel like they've been awaiting the news. And then Colorado State and Tulane would probably be like the looking in, hoping to make it. Um, but we'll see. Um, we'll see what happens. Um before we move on to I, I i'm excited for this next topic actually uh, i feel like we need to talk some more football because this has been a lot of the stuff that happens in the business room um okay before we move on the built march madness bracket is here we know you have a favorite bar or puff and now's your time to make it count go to builtmarchmadness.com to vote for your favorites um you know i'll be i like the, i feel like i like the coconut one i'm not really sure i feel like that's the best one i've had and if you want your the buffs to win wow you'll be voting for that bar to support your team support your bar or puff and when you vote for your favorite bar or puff you'll be entering into a drawing where 50 lucky locked on listeners will get a free box of built not only that but one locked on fan would win a 12 month subscription to built to have built best bars or puffs delivered monthly straight to your door you gotta try built bar excuse me you gotta try built Built the best protein bar ever. Seriously, they're so they're so amazing. You won't even think they're good for you. What makes Built Bars and Puffs so good? Well, for starters, they're all high in protein, low in sugar, and covered in 100 percent real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate, not the fake stuff. Run to builtmarchmadness.com right now to vote for your favorite bar or puff and pick up a box while you're there. You can vote every day in March, so hop in and support your pick. Um, I don't know what flavor. We all have different flavors that we like. I feel like I'm a. I like chocolate, coconut. I'm a. I'm a weirdo that likes the almond joys. I won't say that's my favorite, but I do like it. I do enjoy it. I will partake in the the rare almond joy. Um, moving on though, we are talking. Excuse me. Position groups that I think I'm skeptical about, and I think that there's transfer targets. So I'm gonna go. Well, I'll call it three transfer targets that Colorado should pursue because I'm skeptical about these position groups. Um, up first, the offensive line. Um, I think. The best way to make sure Shadur Sanders succeeds and this offense goes is that Shadur has time to throw. Uh, I'm not saying that he can't throw under pressure, but what quarterback wants to be on the run all the time? Um, he's his line at Jackson State, while he did put up amazing numbers, he was sacked. I think his first year was 30 something, and then the next year was 20. I think it was, let's see, let me pull up the numbers here. I don't want to be leading you astray, but I'm pretty sure it was a high number like that because. I mean, they were uh, a decent line, but he need, decent won't cut it in the Pac-12. Um, there's there's guys flying all over the board. You don't want to, yeah. So 2021, he was sacked 35 times. 2022, he was sacked 23. So for all those mathematicians out there, that's 58 times in two years. Um, let's get a line that could get him on his keep him on his back because even with being sacked 58 times, he threw for nearly 7,000 yards, completed 68 ish percent of his passes, and seven. 70 touchdowns um exactly so he needs a little more a little more oomph up there I, I would say and it never hurts to have more depth injuries happen transfers happen um just random things happen people someone could get sick and you need offensive linemen so first name that comes to mind for me um this is just looking at the top players in the remaining um transfer portal bray walker an interior offensive lineman from oklahoma um he let me pull up his stats right here. A former five-star recruit um, who ranked number 15 overall by 24 seven. Um, he was the number two lineman in the country offense among offensive tackles by 24 seven. He's obviously moved to the interior, chose Oklahoma over Alabama, Alabama, excuse me, Georgia, Oklahoma state, Texas A&M and others. Um, big, big guy, six, seven, three thirty five. Um, he's a one year of eligibility left a redshirt senior. Um, he didn't play 
uh, he played a lot of special teams. Um, in 2022, he played in 11 games. 20 and 21, he played primarily on special teams or in reserve offense line role. So he got some experience this past year, which I think would be beneficial. Again, um, add him, let him be developed even more. Um, and if he works out, great. You have another six seven body because we got six eight. I think we already have a six seven guy on the line. So just another body to block for Shadur. The more the merrier kind of, kind of thing. Um, I wouldn't be against it. And then going to the opposite side of the trenches, Marquise Robinson from Auburn, um, 6'3", 3'10", defense lineman. Uh, I don't think he's as much as a must as I would say Bray Walker, um, I believe. Yeah, that's what I said his name was. Yeah, Bray Walker. Sorry. Got to get used to these new names out here. Um, I don't think Marquise uh, Robinson is as much as a need, if you per se. Um, he was obviously... He only played in three games in two years at Auburn. But here's the thing. Um, he's ranked as the number three transfer right now uh, in in the in the portal, former four-star. I uh, just think he needs a fresh new start. Um, not sure if it, why it didn't work out at Auburn, um, but here's the thing. Sometimes guys need a second chance, uh, a second chance to uh, maybe just produce and, and – Hopefully, I didn't get too muted there. Um, my microphone unplugged. Let me make sure. Okay, that should be good. Um, sometimes guys just need a second chance to play, and I think at Colorado, where a lot of positions are up for grabs, he could find a role for himself. Um, but those first two guys, probably not the most exciting. But here's where I think that the buffs could kind of go a little crazy. Gary Bryant Jr., wide receiver transfer out of USC. His sophomore year was his best season. He grabbed 44 catches for nearly 600 yards and seven touchdowns. Um, he also had a rushing touchdown, and I believe he was a really, yeah, a really good kick returner. Um, returned 16 kicks for 413 yards, um, 11 punts for, uh, let's see, 50 yards. So obviously a special kick returner. Um, they do have Shane Hooks. Hopefully, I think he'll be coming. I don't know. Um, he announced his top five and hasn't really announced a date. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check in. We're getting a live update. Excuse me. Shane Hooks. We're going to get a live update on the show of where Shane Hooks is going. Um, hasn't said anything, you know. He posted his top five, and the post appears to be down. So I think he maybe is nearing a decision. Um his last post was on February 28th that he, uh, so he deleted his top five, which was Colorado, Cincinnati, Texas a and I think UNLV and Louisville, I believe was the last one. Um, but six, four receiver, big bodied. I'm just saying Gary Bryant provides Shadur another weapon. I think this Colorado team has a high ceiling. Shadur just needs a lot of weapons and he already has some, but the more, again, the more the merrier, it never hurts to have more weapons to throw the ball to. Um, but yeah, I really, really think that they should add another more defense lineman more offense lineman another receiver doesn't hurt because i i don't want to say i i'm counting on a transfer this in this next window but i think obviously with coach prime and the the overturn of the roster i think there's going to be some guys from certain positions and receiver could be, very well be one of them that they don't have the role that they would have liked and so it's only natural for some guys to be like you know what i think it's better for me to leave i mean should or should or coach prime did say he's he's bringing his own bags and he that he did and i think we might see a couple guys kind of just see that there's not a big as a role as they hoped for them and there's no problem and that's going to happen everywhere across the country and i think um gary bryant would could come in and probably be one of the better receivers on the roster um would really push jimmy horn him and jimmy horn flying all over the place would be great xavier weaver um great target and then obviously the returning guys assuming they stay um a lot of great targets out there and so uh, I, I like him the most, I would say, in terms of the transfer portal guys I brought in. And then this next one, which me and Josh Newberg talked about this yesterday on yesterday's episode, which go check that out. We also had an interview with Colorado's quarterback target, Danny O'Neill, which John uh, conducted. Great, great talk conversation th between those two, talking about his recruitment with Coach Prime and everything in between. Um, here's the thing. Right now, I think... And you guys are probably, you guys, I feel like you guys get upset when I talk about this. So I'm not trying to make you guys upset. It's just, we need to have a contingency plan for Shadur. 
Shadur, God forbid, I don't want him to get injured. Injuries happen. Maybe he gets sick or who knows. I don't I don't trust his backups. Um, right now, there's Chance Nolan, um, the Oregon State quarterback, who he showed some progress out there. Um, the portal only has, I mean, of all the guys that are in the portal, let's see who's still there that plays quarterback. Um, it's like it's slim pickings out there. I know there's Chance Nolan who played at Oregon State, Isaiah Knowles who is Navy's quarterback, but Navy, Navy quarterbacks are usually like five ten, and I just don't know if they'd be a fit. Um, then you just I'm scrolling through the portal and it's it's just not I don't know it's just, it's very I don't know how to say this, but you don't you don't want to put all your all your your eggs in one basket, and I'm I. I'm confident Shadur will be one of the better quarterbacks in the Pac-12. It's just we don't know his backups too well, and I think this spring is a big moment for those guys. Um, but I do think that Colorado should probably be probably be tra- tra- well targeting a backup quarterback in the portal just to be safe. Um, and I think those transfers are a few guys that I would look out for. Um, the portal obviously right now is a little a little thin. Um, because mostly everybody has found a school. And if you haven't found a school, you're missing out on spring ball. Um, But then the spring ball window or the spring ball window, the transfer portal window opens again. So Colorado has another chance to make moves. Um, This roster is looking good. I don't believe that they have the worst roster in the Pac-12, like a certain someone said the other day. Um, I think Colorado is ready to shock some people. I just think a little more depth here and there, and they'll be solid. They have great, a solid secondary. They have a lot of depth there. Linebackers, I think they could add some more depth. Defensive line is looking strong. Depth never hurts. Offensive line, I would like to see more depth. Um, just you never know who, with what the pieces you got. Just don't want Shadur to be. You want a, an established run game, and you want Shadur to be able to be confident in the pocket. And he has great pocket presence. It's just you don't want him on the run like he was at Jackson State most of the time. And then running backs, I feel like we're solid. Quarterback would love to see a solid backup come in, someone with experience, a little bit of playing time, who doesn't mind kind of being in that reserve role um but yeah i think i think that's it for me today um we talked pa- the pac-12 deal it's, it's happened um the big 12 thing doesn't seem to be happening so Colorado fans the ones that want to stay in the big or go to the big 12 sorry it seems we're staying in the pac-12 pac-12 fans that want Colorado to stay congrats i think they're staying um before i go I want to thank you guys for making Locked On Buzz your first listen every day. Make sure you check out a brand new podcast, Locked On College Basketball. Everything you need to know about college basketball in one place, plus hear from big name experts, insiders, coaches, and players. Locked On College Basketball is available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. I also, oops, wrong tab. Um, we also here at Locked On Buffs are available wherever you get your podcasts. Um, we appreciate you guys' comments, like, subscribe, share. Uh, make sure to listen to this podcast on Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Like I said, we appreciate you guys. We will see you guys on Monday. Have a great weekend. Have a great St. Patrick's Day.